Okay. Um, one verse, and then we'll pray. Um, it's actually not one verse. It's, uh, it's about four verses. Okay, from Proverbs 3. My son, do not forget my law, and let but let your heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace they will add to you. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablets of your heart. And so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. Okay, So do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my commandments. Uh, and then commands, sorry. And then it says, for length of days and long life and peace, they will add to you. Um, let not mercy and truth forsake you, bind them. So a lot of responsibilities you know, that we have in keeping the law of God, in keeping his commands. So he says, you know, my law, God says my law, and then my commands. And then he says, you know, this will happen to you, you know, long life. Peace, they will add to you, uh, esteem, and favor, and a lot of things, benefits of keeping God's law from our heart. Now it says, let your heart, that's how it starts, right? First thing we see, let your heart keep my commands. So it's not something that we intellectually agree to or intellectually see, say that, yes, it is a good good command. Yes, that's a good light, good um, you know, instruction. But our hearts keeping it, right? Which means that deep within, you're saying, okay, this is something that I want to keep. It's not ju just saying that, okay, because people are telling me or because people are watching me uh, or because I'm in, in some kind of an environment, you know, I will obey, right? So this is, uh, this is the heart keeping it, saying no matter where I am, no matter with whom I am, right? No matter who's around me, I will keep this command. I will obey. So that's a heart keeping the command, right? And all the other things follow. You know, length of days, peace, long life, they follow all that. But it starts with our heart keeping our commandments. So if we would make, you know, whatever instruction or whatever things that you're following right now, you know, with regard to following Jesus, with regard to reading the word and, and everything else, if all this was not there, if you are not in this environment, if you are not in Bible college, if you are not, you know, having these schedules, would you still keep it, right? If you are not here, if you are not, you know, maybe not, not even in this country, if you are not, if you are elsewhere, and completely different environment, would you still keep God's commands? So that's the question we need to ask ourselves, right? Because it comes ultimately comes to that, you know, everything that follows is based on that right so let's um, let's pray and then let's just tell the lord lord no matter what no matter where right no matter with who i am or i choose to keep your commands in my heart right let's pray father god we thank you for your word which is lord alive and powerful and which is the truth and which is sharp and convicting. And so, God, even as we ask ourselves this question this morning, God, would we, in our hearts, keep your commands, esteem your word, no matter where we are? Lord, I just pray that you'll enable us to give a truthful answer. And Lord, if it is maybe, if it is no, Lord, we pray that you will enable us, Lord, empower us, Lord, draw us to yourself, God, to your presence, where that change can happen, where we can come aligned to your word and to the truth of your word, God. Yes, Master, we commit ourselves. We thank you for everything that follows out of that, Lord. Everything that follows, everything that is, Lord, based on that, Father God, out of keeping your heart, Lord, keeping your commands in our hearts, Lord. And I just pray that each one of us will be, Lord, people who walk in it, who will experience it, receive it, experience it, and walk in the fullness of it. Lord, we thank you. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. So how are things otherwise? Um, 
yeah we've been looking at um, um yeah the, yeah we we looked at um, the confrontation right uh, the sorry uh, the approachability principle and now we're looking at the foxhole principle so you know all these principles are meant though, though there are no chapter and verse you know we we see that they are biblically based or based on scripture right um the foxhole principle is is quite a simple thing the, the term foxhole just means it's a military term right it's just that uh, you know it, it's like a hole where well the the animal the fox uh, stays in you know it's like the home but actually uh, in military terms it means a hole that is dug by the soldier right in battle as a as a protection for him um so he's carrying all the weapons and everything so it's in the heat of battle uh, a hole that is you know just under the ground and uh, just big enough for him to be there to protection against uh, the enemy's uh, you know bullets and and all that to be you know not to be sighted not to be in open view of the enemy so that's how it, that's a foxhole so so what is this foxhole principle so foxhole principle is that you know normally in the military also they say that if you are digging a foxhole dig one which is big enough for you and for another soldier so if not for two other soldiers but at least for you and another soldier because you know that soldier who needs that protection can also jump in and fight alongside you right so that's the foxhole principle so the foxhole principle means that in life you always need you know uh, uh, whenever we encounter challenges or we go through seasons which are difficult we need the help of others right there's so much that we can do by ourselves but there's so much more that we can do when others are with us right and uh, that is something that we are going to learn in the next section you know about team where there is synergy right where is exponential increase of strength and resources and you know everything that we do with our thinking and anal analysis when we do it with another person right so so that's the team and and the lord also you know sent them two by two right so we see that uh, you know the whole synergy that comes because of the team the, the the strength increase in strength that comes because of the team right so we see here that in difficult times we always have the need for others who can help us yeah, others who can strengthen us and we see several examples in scripture you know uh, a very familiar one is the picture of the the body of believers right that the believers having fellowship with one another that it is called the body of christ right spiritually we are placed in the body of christ and practically we live out live out that spiritual principle in the local church right and so we see in 1 corinthians 12 we see um uh let me just read read just a few verses okay 1 corinthians chapter 12 um okay so chapter 12 uh and verse 12 right for as the body is one and has many members but all the members of that one body are uh, being many are one um of, of that one body being many are one body so also is christ right and then goes on to talk about for in fact the body is not one member but many okay and it talks about verse 15 if the foot should say because i am not a hand i am not of the body it is therefore is it therefore not of the body so it's talking about difference right because of difference in or difference in strength difference in ability difference in you know whatever perspective if the organ should say that you know i'm different therefore i don't belong you know how difficult it would be you know just saying that you know it it doesn't make sense it, it doesn't make sense for the body to function it it doesn't make sense for the strength and you know and everything that the body needs is depleted right if one organ would say you know i'm different therefore i don't want to be part of it okay then if you go further down it says and the eye cannot say to the hand i have no need of you 
nor again the head to the feet i have no need of you so so there the dif- because of the difference one is saying to the other you are different from me you know you know therefore i don't have a use for you in this body okay so two things right one is saying that i am different so i don't think i can be part of this the other thing is you know you are different so you cannot be part of it so so in in both these cases we see that you know there is an alienation there is a separation right so we're talking you know we're talking about teams we're talking as leaders when we're leading teams when we're leading people that as we you know want to win with people then this principle holds good right in order to in order to building trust in order to uh you know developing mutual trust the foxhole principle where we say that yes in fighting these challenges in fight in facing these challenges you know we'll do it together okay um so isolation is not the answer isolation is not uh, you know it's not healthy um so so that's that's something that we need to understand right so it always it's good to collaborate it's good to have people who are what you can say as foxhole friends okay so these are relationships which keep us healthy this may not be you know relationship with every every person right when you fight your battle i remember doing one ex- uh, like you know at one of those camps when i was a participant in a youth camp uh so this pastor who came and he spoke he you know did a exercise okay so he said okay now we are going to have uh you know one particular exercise we are where it's um, it's something to do with your physical strength you need to break something or you need to lift something okay now you now you need to pick two other people to be part of your team okay so everybody went everybody picked uh you know the team and obviously they picked someone who could actually help lift that whole thing right they pick then he said okay uh, that's fine then he was asking you know why did you pick that person why did you choose that person you know he's tall he's is big strong then he said okay now you know pick someone to whom you would share your problems okay pick someone uh, who would whom you can confide your secrets pick someone whom with whom you can share your weakness okay would you pick the same team so that was his question okay the answer was no <laughs> you know we wouldn't we won't pick the same team it's actually it's, it's not even two others but it could be just one person okay. so this goes on to prove that yeah we can't live in isolation and the number of people who will actually fight alongside you at a very personal level need not be many or may not be many right it could be just one other person but that's a great help that's coming from from them right so they provide strength before challenges or they provide strength even during the challenge or during the battle okay so just just keep that in mind you know there's uh, many times because of hurt because of maybe uncomfortable situations we we forget to sorry we forget to uh, you know or we we choose not to um, have or confide or have people fighting alongside us but it's a great strength great comfort and um, to have people with us you know during challenging times so like i just uh, remember one one other instance which happened like this is um the day my uh, my father passed away and i we had to travel that night to go to our hometown which was about 6 hours drive from bangalore right so we decided to drive i decided to go by car decided to drive so i was actually in a in some planning meeting finished that came back home uh, i mean finished that as in you know halfway through we had to leave so came back home and uh, just getting uh, you know i just informing people and they're saying i have to go i'm need to go this is one person came staying close by he did not preach a lengthy message on you know uh, on on peace of god or you know how comfort uh, nothing he just said you know uh, just give me a khaki he took he said do you have any newspaper do you have a mug of water you know uh, just give me a mug where can i get water he just took he wiped all the windows 
you know with that paper newspaper you know uh, and uh, just put water on it dried it completely because he knew that i was driving in the night he checked the tire pressure made sure that this thing was okay that was it right simple act but it was done at the point of need and it was exactly what i needed at that time nothing else was necessary you know just wanted to go wanted to you know it was a drive through the night uh, it would be, probably we started around 10 o'clock or something but this was exactly what was required and that is what um, you know which means that is how, that is how we need to be to another person when you are fighting together you know facing challenges together and that is the kind of comfort or strength or encouragement or help that the other person can bring into our lives right so just to say that it it need not be something big something you know it can be something small but that will really help us and give us strength and encouragement during times of adversity okay so we looked at a few principles here about building mutual trust okay so like we said earlier building trust is not an overnight thing building trust takes time building trust um, is based on transparency building trust is based on communication like open communication um, and it's going to take time it's a process okay right okay so let's look at the next one which is about nurturing relationships you know when we're talking about people when we're talking about we're talking about relationships right and which involves people so when we look at that we we see that relationships are not automatic okay a very basic principle relationships are not automatic okay which means just like how you switch on a computer well you know it's going to switch on and you switch on a you know fan or something it's you know it's going to work as long as there's power well relationships are not like that these need to be nurtured right the which means that there has to be an investment of time there has to be an investment of energy and so on for the relationship to thrive right the relationship can grow the relationship can thrive you know i'm sure that you know you may have met some friends uh, after a long time maybe after years right it's like maybe your school friends or you know people who used to live next door when you were you know small or whatever and sometimes you know after years when you meet it's as if it's as if the time has not passed you know it's as if you met them yesterday you know because they are still close they are still you know um so how did that happen it's because of the strength of that relationship which you had during those days as you were growing up right the kind of time that you spent the kind of maybe shared activities or shared memories which has been an in in investment like investment uh, emotionally as well now so that is how the relationship thrived and, st and strengthened so and and we realize that it becomes difficult right as we grow up the kind of friendships that we had during our childhood it's difficult to have again right it uh, because things are complex and things are complicated right it's not as simple you know one day you fight the you know you fight the hardest you know if you're a childhood friend and the next next day or even the next hour you're you're playing again right but things are not so easy now you know you there's something called offense and grudge and everything that we you know we hold on to and it's not like it's not that when you are a child so things are different so we need to understand it's going to take time you know to develop a friendship to develop a relationship even if it's a you know even if it's a formal work professional relationship right the underlying factor is okay if it's a professional relationship well they need to contribute they are working for a remuneration or salary or whatever or maybe you know we are working together on this project there is a shared expectation you know what the target is you know how how you know how best you do it we need to do it you know so even in such scenarios right there is this whole aspect of developing a relationship nurturing a relationship right because of which 
things get done right really you know we don't we don't need to uh, you know use our uh, rank or use our title in order to get things done right uh, we it's because of the strength of our relationship right okay so four four things that we can look at um one is the gardening principle you know it's it's self explanatory we know that um you know right now the, the plot outside has been cleared right it's been cleared they've kind of cleared of everything but you just leave it maybe after a rain after a monsoon season you just leave it and you see all kinds of things there good bad everything right you see the weeds you see so the gardening principle is that it needs to be tended to right it needs to be attended uh if you want something to be um you know the garden to grow you want a garden to be beautiful you want it to be orderly right it needs work okay i'm sure you've seen you know some some gardens and um and especially in the hills like uti or kunno uh they have, during summer time you know all these they have some kind of a I, i i don't know some contest and some award to the best garden you know so if you see if you see that there's a lot of hard work that goes into it right it's not automatic you know i'm not a major garden person but i know that there's a lot of work goes into it there's a lot of you know care there's a lot of making sure that gardens get the right i mean plants get the right amount of water okay uh, i always thought you give more water it will grow better you know anybody thinking like that <laughs> sometimes they die yeah that's true some plants require very little water in fact the bougainvillea that you see outside they thrive yeah they they actually bloom when there's no water like even some of the cactuses they actually start blooming when there's no water so you realize that you need to know what the plants are how much they need you need to make sure that you know they are protected nurtured etc so you know when we look at a relationship also it needs to be another word for that is it needs to be cultivated okay um so it takes a lot out of you time energy example like even uh, a marriage relationship requires time requires energy and sudden, suddenly you know as a newly wed person i i realized oh my god it's taking a lot out of me right you mean i need to come home and sit and talk i've already done talking you know as a sales person i was just talking talking everywhere and i i can't come home and talk and and talk about how the day went <laughs> then i realize oh i need help i need help in terms of how to do this well how to do this right okay so so the thing is this that relationship requires cultivation so if you look at a team you know if you look at the church that you're leading that you're, you know you have a spiritual leadership work it means that you need to develop that relationship okay it doesn't mean that you know you're always saying nice things you're always complimenting you're always you know uh it, it doesn't it, you're always pleasing people no it's not that but as long as we understand that yes these are people and therefore it requires a relationship and on the strength of the relationship you know there is influence because you are called to lead people and and leading is about influence influencing for the better right it's not manipulation it's for the better so that uh, people can receive and people can grow and it's for the better right so um sometimes you know when you talk about relationships it's it uh, it could be for a particular project right it could be for a season Right. it could be for a season you know in the sense i'm sure that you've done group projects as students we've done so it is only for that project you're getting together and as soon as that project is over you that group is disbanded right so sometimes it could be like that you know so you realize that okay this is why we are gathering together you know it's it's for a season right but some you realize that it's for a lifetime Okay, that seasonality or the time period is lifetime, which means years and decades and so on. Like you know, a covenant relationship, like marriage, 
so on. So, um, so for winning with people, we need relationships. For relationships, those need to be nurtured, and just like how a garden is cultivated. Okay. So practically, how would how do you think? You know, practically, I just want to ask, how do you think a gardening principle would work? Practically speaking, it's good to say, okay, I will water the plant. So when it's, let's say, a team that you're leading, how do you think um, you would apply this? Yeah, Francis. Yeah, you can use the mic. Uh, so Let's say you're leading a team. You got a team. You're leading a team. So this gardening principle, how do you apply it? Okay. Uh, so pastor, like while well, you're teaching this, I'm. I went to like, uh, like my home. Like we have farms and all. So regarding gardening, like if in case we are leading a team, not only pouring the water, like wherever the things we not needed, we need to cut it off. So if leading a team, like if it should go well. Like as well, we are uh, nurturing. Like we are guiding them, and we need to remove with other things is not correct or not going well. Yeah. Right. So um, removal of things that are that actually hinder the the growth, right? So so basically, if we actually rewind a bit, go back a bit, the first step would be to understand what's happening. Like, how would we know, you know, what is unnecessary if we don't understand the team, right? So that's the understanding the person. Um, so it, it would require knowing, okay, what their strengths are, what their skills are, how they are temperamentally, and so on, right? To understand uh, how they are. And uh, so how, do, how does one understand that unless you are meeting? Right, so it it can be a formal meeting, but it can also be an informal meeting, right? Having a cup of tea, where we understand not just the work part of it, but you understand the personal side of it, which influences the work part, and sometimes you know which acts as a barrier for the work part as well. You know, so so these kind of things. Yeah, what else? Any, anything else? So you want to say? Yeah. I think spending time mm -hmm. um, and giving your time and seeing what's happening. Yeah, so time is one big any, anything else that you can think of, you know. So, mm. you uh, some of our efforts not more right right so this investment of time also depends on what kind of a you know setup or what kind of a relationship it is right so that would help us prioritize our time as well like we have only 24 hours and in that we have so many things that are required of us you know like you'll be a you know maybe a father a pastor a you know, so many things, um, you know, so out of that, we need to prioritize and give that quality time. So, so you decide, you know, what kind of a relationship is this? Is it, is it required really to invest so much? So yes, certain things require investment, maybe because of the problem, because of the nature of the relationship. So you need to decide and you need to invest, right? Yeah. So, so can we choose um, what kind of? Uh, nah. So some, yeah, some you some you have control. Okay, some you have control, in the sense, uh, okay, what kind of a relationship do I want? Okay, so you 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 prioritize things according. You set your expectations. You set your boundaries according to that, right? Yes. Yeah. 
correct yeah yeah so which means that maybe physically emotionally spiritually whatever financially whatever you know you are in, in a maybe your season of life and whatever doing and this is what you can right and so you need to set right the expectation the boundaries everything but certain times what happens is that let's say uh maybe in ministry or you know you're doing certain things and um it requires it is you know it is let's say work you you join some place you're working and you have a team and uh, it's a professional setup but you didn't have control over it the team was already there and you're going in there to serve as part of a team or lead the team so you didn't have a say in it but um it was already there right so certain things yes you can choose but certain things you cannot right um okay so jackins is call and speak send them a text okay encourage them share their concerns so we can pray and uphold them yes thank you yeah so communication is very important right um so we realize that um, you know um how do you share how, how do you show concern how do you you know find out by asking questions by observing right and so our communication or how can you show respect and honor and whatever and uh, how, how can people understand that okay this person uh, respects us or has concern for us and therefore we can trust and therefore we can work together and uh, it depends on our communication right uh, how we communicate and and what we do right so communication is very very important okay right okay let's let's move on okay the second one that we can look at which will help which will be helpful for us okay so we are looking at uh, we looked at um, gardening principle the second one is um, is the 101% principle okay it's again close to uh, what we uh, what we studied just now okay where we you know this would be for certain covenant relationships maybe um maybe it could be even certain work settings where people are so different people are um you know maybe difficult let's say right so the 101 principle is that you find that one person that you agree on that one person that is worth investing the time and you give it your 101% effort okay just think about it finding that one person that you agree on and giving your giving it the 101 giving it our 101% going beyond that 100 even okay so or 100% if not other than one you know so that's something that we can uh, that we can look at okay so the question is uh, can i find common ground okay this is these are scenarios where you know this person is very different but still you know we need to we need to work together still we need to build that trust right so maybe from the point of a leader where you need to take that initiative right you realize what is that one person that i can agree on agree with this person right what is that one person and give it or and invest that 100% effort okay um so so that's something that we can do okay so um it mostly you know when we look at even covenant relationships and um uh, and even professionally um so the question where we ask is question some of the questions that we can ask is you know is this person okay worth investing or worth this commitment so that's the thing right so we look at it we don't we're not looking at it negatively you know this just saying you know this person is not worth you know you're really honestly asking you know i am going to invest so much i'm going to put in effort but is this person worth the kind of setting we are in um the kind of season you know is is this person worth this kind of commitment 
right now we need to understand that every person is has got worth because of the way because jesus died for them every person person has value okay so we're not looking at that you know we're looking at is this because see um we cannot do this we cannot expend ourselves our time our effort our energy on on everyone no no that might seem like a very harsh thing like practically it's not possible right you just look at it you know if you if you're leading a, maybe a ch church of 1000 okay and everyone wants to spend you know x amount of time or you know which is which is not practically possible okay and that is why you know even with the lord uh when during his earthly ministry if you see that he had peter james and john who were quite close to him right and then we see the 12 and then we see the 70 that he sent out so we see that progression right but he had that those three who were there with him so so the thing is and so ask us you know is this person worth that you know are they one helpful thing is to see you know are they part of that 3 or 12 or you know 70 or what not you know yes we value them respect them you know it's not we're not being disrespectful in any way Okay, so that's the clarity. You know, we value, we respect, but with regards to your investing in their lives, how much can you do? Right. So we need to ask that question. Okay. The sec second thing to ask is: Is the situation worth the commitment? Okay. First is the person. Second question we might we could ask is: Is this situation worth this commitment? Okay. So. let's say uh, if it's not worth it uh for example if it is something that that needs to be delegated for example right if can be delegated or the person can be referred to someone someone else okay maybe it's a counseling kind of a situation is the situation worth that kind of a commitment from from you okay um that's another question okay so these are some questions that would help us and um that would help us to put in that kind of an effort and we need to ask ourselves right because we can uh, this would really help us to prevent any burnout this would really help us to prioritize the best use of our time okay um but i just want to reiterate we are not in any way being rude or disrespectful uh to people Okay. Okay. Any questions? Yeah. Thing. Okay. Okay. Let's look at the third one. Okay. The the third one is uh, you know what you would call uh, the patience. principle okay so it comes with the understanding that again what we looked at as 1 corinthians 12 it we looked at the different members we looked at um, you know uh, the body and people are different people have different uh, maybe different levels of maturity maybe people have different skill sets okay um so you know how many times have you maybe gone on a journey maybe walk from one place to another and they realize that that person is not fast enough okay or you you felt that that person is too fast you're not able to keep up right uh, so, some people walk like that that's their speed you know they just walk very fast and some hey, why is this person running right <laughs> yeah and then so you realize that hey i i'm not able to keep up now slow down uh um you know you you too you 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 know you you the way you walk i can't pace i can't keep pace with right so the thing is that um we need to understand that yes if you're leading there will be people maybe not as skilled as you are right who who don't have that speed and uh, and whatever you know ability that you might have okay so that calls for us to be patient okay simple thing um so that we need to uh, we need to understand that 
Okay, because um, the thing is that sometimes we 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 come down very harshly, right? Because we don't know where people are. We don't know that um, that people might be having some difficulties. People people genuinely are not skilled in certain areas like you are, maybe, right? So there's no point in saying uh, this writing that person off. There's no point in saying that they, this person cannot keep up, so therefore they do not belong. Okay. So as long as it's not a problem of attitude, but it's a problem of aptitude. What is the difference? No, aptitude, it just means skill, ability. Okay. So as long as it's not a question of you know, aptitude. So what we're saying is that when it comes to attitude, which means that my, my I have a mindset. I'm able, but I have a mindset. You know, I, I can come. I can come on time. I can do this. I, you know, I can do it, but I have a mindset. I'm thinking, why should I? Or it's not worth it. You know? So that's an attitude. Aptitude is just skill and the ability, natural ability, or even learned ability, experience, whatever. So as long as you know, we we realize that okay, it's a, it's a question of aptitude, and it's not an attitude kind of thing, right? So having developing patience and having patience and having this understanding of people is very important. Okay, um, so how do I do that? Okay, one thing that uh, you know that will help us is to is to value people. Okay, is to value them as people, see them as people. It's very difficult. Um, you know, it's or rather, it's very easy when we are actually working on, a, let's say, a project or working on something together, and we so very badly want to be successful. Right? We want to be successful. We want to be good at something. We want to reach the objective. Okay. So when we, or maybe you as a leader, a lot of things are, you know, depending on you to carry things out successfully. Okay. So it's very easy to slip into a kind of thinking that a hey, if this person doesn't do it, of course you are disappointed but you don't actually respect them or you don't value them as a as a person and it happens in church it's, and you know it happens in any organization where because they they could not function well for xyz reasons whatever it could be aptitude attitude whatever we don't value them as a person so if we develop that you know the whole thing of okay this is a human being is a person, right? And God is, they have intrinsic value because God sees them as people with value. He respects them, right? He, so when we start having that understanding, when we develop that understanding, then it's, it's easier to extend patience. Okay. Second thing. Um, yes, it takes time because patience is required um, in order to build relationships. And it, it helps, you know, even in this, to have that exchange principle. What is that exchange principle that we talked about? You remember? Exchange principle. It's, it's in the word itself, right? Where you exchange places, you know, you see things from their viewpoint, where they are, okay? Um, and then it will help us, you know. The thing is, it's not a long-term solution. But it actually helps us address the problem adequately, right? Um, for example, let's say somebody, somebody was supposed to maybe like you know open the church, church, you know, and arrange things, and you go and then you find that they've not done it. Okay, so what is your immediate, immediate response? What is what is it on your mind? Huh? Yeah, the question is there, but what what conclusion are you coming to? Hmm, this person messed up. This person made a mistake. 
and and especially if there's this person has a history of you correcting them maybe two twice or thrice you told them hey i'm warning you please come please do it a lot depends on it and the person doesn't do it naturally we will come to the conclusion this person again messed up this person again messed up so the tendency is to start the conversation by saying i've told you so many times right and again you didn't you know this is not working out at all so that's how we normally would start but the exchange principle would be you know i wonder what happened this time right let me ask let me find out maybe there is a genuine reason maybe there is a genuine reason maybe you know so let's find out right so uh, having led teams you know i i know that there are some people who who need help okay who need help coming on time who need help preparing who need help right so we know that they are their struggles are in certain challenges good people their struggles are in certain challenges so without this whole thing of patience um we we will begin to devalue them okay um so so that is not correct okay uh, if we want to build trust mutual trust devalue them so your question might be might be that then how can i get the job done right so that's a, that's a different discussion altogether <laughs> okay so we're just focusing on okay this is how i'm going to build mutual trust or oh, sorry um, this is on uh, about relationship and how i'm going to you know enable that relationship to thrive how can i invest in it so this will help us right but how to get the job done how to solve it and are there consequences for it yeah, those are different issues right okay 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 then uh the fourth one okay the fourth one if we look at it um it's the celebration principle okay so what does that mean that means that uh, it's it's very very important that uh, you know sometimes what happens is okay we we get some job done and they say okay that's what you're that's what you're here for right so what is the what is the big deal about it what is the need to say thank you what is the need to compliment and say good job that's what you are here for that's what you were taken in for you know sometimes we can have that attitude this person i've given them this responsibility that's their responsibility and that is why i put them in this place right but the celebration principle is we we celebrate the victory and we celebrate it together saying it was a job well done it was done well it was so it was uh, it was something that you he won so you so you celebrate okay. so celebrate would mean acknowledge celebrate starts by acknowledging celebrate starts by maybe complimenting and in all this there is genuineness right um like have you seen employees being celebrated any any place that you've seen employees in an organization appreciation uh -huh. no corporate also they do yeah sorry no i'm saying apart from of course uh, but anyway you know and how they've done it i just want to hear okay this is how they did it and it was it's something that worked sorry sorry if travel and they are leaving hmm okay yeah sure hmm okay achieved some success and i uh, i don't know like uh, if you've been to any of these uh, fast food places uh, i'm just thinking of fast food places because i've seen it they usually have this employee of the month you know uh, like kfc and all that they have this picture of the guy and then say he was a star performer like i don't know based on what they do that maybe he was good with the customers maybe he you know he solved certain complex problems or issues but then they have that they put that thing saying star performer okay so it just means that 
the management is acknowledging, the leadership is acknowledged, observed and seen that hey, this guy has done a good work. So they don't have to do it, right? Because he's getting paid for it. Uh, he's getting maybe incentives for it. They don't have to do it, but it helps when you celebrate together. It helps the morale of the entire team and the organization and the person himself or herself, you know, um, at the end of the day. Okay. Okay. So we'll stop here and then we'll continue on Thursday, right? Thank you. God bless.